my friend, and welcome back to Above Par. It's nice to have you here and listening, whether you're walking or driving or on the golf course or what you're doing. I just want to start by saying, hang in there with me today because I am coming off a cold and I really can't breathe very well. And I normally talk really fast, but I might have to slow down and take some pauses or blow my nose. So if you hear some random just pauses in here, I just, um, I'm ru- I run out of air quickly, especially it might be good because I'll slow myself down. But I did want to say thank you to all the people who are reaching out and sending me some nice emails and comments about the value that they're getting out of the podcast. I really appreciate it. I appreciate all the emails. Keep them coming. Let me know how I can help you. Uh, any other topics you'd like to discuss? I love hearing all of it. So thank you so much for sending in those all those nice emails to, the, to uh, those of you who have done that. I appreciate it. So today I wanted to talk to you about scarcity and scarcity in the sense of how it affects us, of course, on the golf course, but I'm going to take a broad brush to scarcity and talk about how it shows up in our life. And then I'm going to bring it back down into the golf course, because I am of the opinion that how we do one thing, we do everything. So when you have certain things show up on the golf course, likely they are also showing up off the golf course in different areas of your life. And this is just an opportunity for you to take a look, see where you're holding yourself back, where you have some limiting beliefs things, thoughts that maybe are not creating the results that you want, and maybe you can shift them in different areas of your life. So scarcity is basically the thought of lack or not enough. Those are synonyms for that or uh, under supply or an insufficiency. So anywhere in your life that you're feeling, or you think actually, or notice thoughts of there's not enoughness, there's lack that is scarcity. So that can show up with time. Sometimes if you find yourself saying that I don't have enough time, there's not enough time in the day. I can't get everything done. I'm too busy, right? If you're saying things like that, that is coming from a scarcity mindset about time. Talk to talk about time. We all have the same amount of time (laughs) and it is a construct of our mind anyway. So there's always enough time, plenty of time, but we can feel like there is not enough time to do all the things that we want to do. The more we say that to ourselves, the more we find that it's so that we produce, we become over busy or overwhelmed or confused on how we're going to get everything done because we don't think we have enough time. So another one would be money. So we can have scarcity or lack mindsets about money. There's just not, money is hard to come by. There's not enough money to go around. I don't have enough money. I can't afford things. When we come from saying that there's not enough or there's a, there's a lack or there's an undersupply, we produce that in our lives, right? We're not coming from the mindset that there's plenty of money to go around. Money is easy to come by. That's a thought that we learn very early on about money. That's a whole different topic. I'm here talking about golf, but I just want to show you the way that scarcity can show up in other parts of our life. Another one is with food. Right. So especially if you grew up with a big family, or maybe you grew up with a family that didn't have enough food, we can come in the mindset. There's just not enough food to go around. So like you throw food on the table and you have ravenous kids trying to take it all, (laughs) eat, eat all the food, right. They can grow up having this mindset that food, there's just not enough food to go around that they're going to run out of food. Right. And that's where a lot of times we get people who overeat because they feel like they're just, just, or don't, are not willing to throw out food or to discard. We had that mindset when I was growing up, it's like, we couldn't waste food. There was always starving kids in China. So eat it. (laughs) So it's so funny. It's like, it's just, it's, I don't know why it's any better in your body than it is in the garbage, but you know, there's starving kids in China, eat, finish and clean your plate. That comes from a little bit of a scarcity mindset. So what does this have to do with golf? We can do this to ourselves on the golf course as well. We can have scarcity mindsets about our golf game that there's not enough to go around, that we don't have enough birdies and putts. We can only hit so many good bunker shots. We only get up and down so many times. We, have, we, we put a cap on ourselves on the golf course. And I want you to really, as you're listening to this, think about what you say to yourself on the golf course, where you have this scarcity mindset, that there's a limited number. So let me give you some other examples where this shows up. One could be that I always have a blow up hole, right? I'm always screwing up somehow. I'll have a good round going. And I just, you know, I'll always have that one or two holes that screws everything up. I never, I never play good on the last few holes. I can't put two good nines together. 
I had a client who we came up with this. We figured this one thought out. It did not take long because he shared that right away. He stated it to me like he was stating the weather and the facts and it was the news. It's like, I just, I just don't put two good nines together. And I was like, that's curious. I'm like, is it always nines? He's like, he says, he's like, yes. I'm like, you never, it's like you have maybe a bad stretch between five and 12. It's always like either one to nine is good. And then 10 to 18 is bad. And he's like, yeah, they're always coming in just the nines. It's either the front nine or the back nine. So interesting, right? Like, what are the chances that that happens? But in his mind, he's, he thinks that he can't put a good 18 holes together to create a round. Another one is I don't play well in qualifiers. I don't play in tournaments. I don't play in certain tournaments. You might think that you can only hit so many fairways in a round that you're only going to make so many pars during a round or that you have a quota on birdies. I used to think I had a quota on birdies. <laughs> I don't know if I said that before. I used to think like three or four, that's like what my average is. That's all I can do. I totally limited myself because I was like, I, that's me. I, I went out and I made three or four birdies but nothing really more than that. So I go out and I make a couple bogeys. Now I'm like, oh crap, right? These birdies better start showing up. What happens if I don't make all those birdies that day? That's going to be a problem, right? So when I got started out and I made a couple bogeys or if I made a double, then my mind, I'm like, I can't get this back because I only make so many birdies in a round because of course I had horrible thoughts about my putting. So while you go through statistics, you might sit there and say, Kathy, yes, but this is what I average. I average this many putts and I average this many birdies, I only hit this many fairways. If you're stating the news, that's fine. But if you start to create a story about you, the golfer who only makes so many putts around, and this is the end of the story, it's never going to get any better than that. It's never going to get any better than that. That is going to be the end of your story. I was playing with a group of friends and my uh, one friend made a hole in one. Now that was the second time I've been with her when she's made a hole in one. So she of course thought I was her lucky charm. But the other girl in the group, the other woman in the group told, said to her that she's stealing all the hole in one. She's using them all up. Like quit making hole in ones. Like there's only so many to go around. And I'm pretty sure she was serious. <laughs> there was no joke to that. She really thought that she was using up all the possible hole in ones that were going around. It's just like, it just comes out, right? It's just amazing. But of course that's not realistic. That's not true. That's just such a limited scarcity mindset that there's only so many, there's a quota of how many hole-in-ones one person can have or how many hole-in-ones that there are, like there's a supply of it. There's a limited amount that can go around and she's taking up the lion's share. <laughs> it's so funny the way that works, but this is the thing. This is what I want to tell you. You want to shift. If you notice that you have some of these limited scarcity mindsets, you want to start shifting your thinking I always tell you that my first thing is, is you want to start noticing your thoughts. You want to start noticing that you're saying some of these limited scarcity, lack, insufficient supply thoughts. Notice where they show up for you. Notice that you're stating them like it is a fact. And when we do that, when we state our thoughts like they're facts and they just become non-negotiable, there's no room for growth in that. It's not going to change because it's a fact. Right. And so we just kind of say, well, this is the way things are. What we do is we tell the story of ourselves as the person who has this insufficiency. So it would look like this is a story of Kathy. You know, Kathy is a person who only makes three birdies in a round. Like imagine if you went up to the first tee <laughs> and you're like, hi, my name is Kathy. I'm just going to tell you this is the way it's going to go today. I'm going to make three or four birdies. I'm also probably going to have a blow up hole. I'm going to have a good nine and a bad nine. And I likely won't break 80 because I just, I'm a type of person who doesn't break 80. Right? What if you imagine introducing yourself that way? I think some people would be relieved <laughs> because we worry about what other people think, but this is it. We're telling the story of ourselves as a person who can only do so much. Like what is your lack story? What is your insufficient story? What can you not do enough of? Have you ever had with some of those great rounds going and you're like, this is amazing. I've never played this low before. And you just kind of automatically go back and you kind of blow up the last few holes. That's you getting back to your comfort zone, right? No, no, this is, I'm out of my comfort zone. This isn't me. This isn't the story that I'm telling of myself, right? This is, this is outside of my realm. I'm the type of person who shoots whatever in the high eighties. I'm on my way to break and par that can't happen. Right. And then we sabotage unknowingly. We're not doing it on purpose. 
it's because we're telling ourselves, you're, you're, you're telling yourself a story of who you are as a golfer, right? So who are you stating the story of? I'm a person who, how many birdies do you make? Pars do you make? Are you a person who blows up on the last three holes? Do you tell the story of you're a person who chokes in tournaments? You're a person who's anxious. This is a little off topic, but we also tell stories about that too. I'm a person who just has anxiety and I play golf with anxiety. We never given ourselves an opportunity in there to change and shift. Tell the story of who you want to be. Who do you want to be? Right? Start coming up with an abundant thoughts and abundant mindset. Abundant is where there's plenty or my favorite word, plethora. There's a plethora of birdies out there. There's a plethora of fairways to hit, right? There's a wealth of good swings in me. That's another one. People are like, I only have so many good swings. <laughs> really? I don't know. Is that true? Because guess what? You're going to prove it over and over and over again. Your brain likes to be right. So if you tell yourself the story that you only have so many good swings, you can only hit so many fairways, you can only make so many putts, you're going to prove that right. Even when you're disproving it and you have three holes left, you're going to blow the last three holes to prove yourself right. You want to shift that thought and come up with more of an abundant mindset thought, a plenty mindset thought. How do you do that? So if you're telling the story of you're a person who only makes, I'm going to go back to my story that I'm, I'm a person who only makes three or four birdies around, right? You want your first shift is, I mean, you'd love to get to the point where there's, I can birdie every hole and believe it. That's the difference, right? We want to believe it. So I'm a type of person who can totally birdie every hole, not a problem. You might have to start with, it's totally possible. I can birdie more than three or four holes. It's totally possible. I can break 80 whatever your number is, it's possible. I have a lot of good swings in me. And then you shift it to your next step is there's plenty of good swings. It makes no sense that I couldn't birdie every hole. Of course I could birdie every hole. Who's to say that I can't make a ton of putts today or to hit a ton of fairways. I've also put together two good nines before. I know I can do it again. It's subtle. It feels so different and you start proving yourself right in this area too. Your brain likes to prove you right. So if you tell it what you want to prove to be right, it will go to work to prove it. So if you let yourself think a thought that there's plenty of birdies out there for me to make today, your brain's going to want to prove that right. As long as you don't switch it, that thought, as long as you don't let go of it, you want to hang on to that. So what, what I want you to do is go out and start listening for your lack thoughts, your scarcity thoughts, those limiting thoughts that are going to keep you stuck and repeating the same things that you're repeating over and over again. Especially if you're having getting, you're struggling getting to a next level, whether it's making enough birdies, breaking through a score barrier, whether it's putting a couple nines together, putting 18 holes together, listen for the little subtle thoughts that sometimes you need someone like me to notice. I notice them right away when people talk to me. You might have to write them down on a piece of paper and get them out of your head and then look at them and notice anything in there. Then I want you to add, it's possible I could, whatever it is, make more birdies, put two nines together. I've done it before, I can do it again. You wanna start slowly shifting yourself out of that scarcity mindset because you've done it as a habit. So it's stuck in there a little bit. So it's gonna take some work for you to repeat some thoughts over and over again. I like to start with just adding, it's totally possible I can do this. I've done it before. Why can't I do it? Start there, start building yourself up into that abundant mindset where there's plenty of low rounds in here. There's plenty of putts to be made. There's plenty of birdies to make. There's plenty of tournaments to win feels so much better. And you're going to create that reality for yourself. If you think that way. All right, my friend, you know, you can reach out to me with a, one of the links in the description. I'm always here. Happy to help you. Happy to help you play to your potential and get out of your way because I want people to play golf with more peace and confidence. All right. I'll talk to you next week.